Hey Virgo, welcome back, welcome back. We're gonna take a look at your weekend messages here for Virgo Sun, Moon, Rising, or Venus. If you're new, welcome. Please smash that like button and subscribe. Personal reading links and everything you need is in the description box below. So, all right, weekend of August 23rd through the 25th. Yes, yes, yes. So we're starting Virgo season, yay! So if you have a birthday this weekend, happy birthday. I hope you have a wonderful time. I know I will. All right, you guys. So let's get into your message and see what is coming up here for the weekend. So you're starting with soulmates. Oh, shit. Twin flames. <laughs> oh, my gosh. What is going on here? Soulmates? Twin flames? What? And a karmic relationship. Oh, my gosh. Ugh. Which is it? All right, so you have soulmates, a soul connection, partnership, agreement, a soul contract. You also have twin flame, the yin-yang, zen, balance, union, duality, coupling, complementing each other, and then karmic relationship, fleeting triggers, turmoil, resentment, lessons, letting go, and loving you. All right, so we're breaking this down. We are going to break this down. We are going to start with a soulmate, okay? Show Virgo. What is the soulmate energy? What is going on here over the weekend? Show Virgo. What is going on? All right. You have a soulmate, Virgo, with a king of cups. Uh, uh, a soul connection. So you have a soul contract with a king of cups. Cancer, Scorpio, or Pisces. Okay. Now, I know some of you might be like, I don't know any who that is this person could show up over the weekend so in other words they're significant over this weekend okay whether this is a friendship um it could be a romantic relationship it could be a soulmate i mean a like a family member or a friend okay gonna be very significant let's see why what's going on Ooh, you have a potential potential for growth with a king of cups masculine or feminine as usual okay so let's see a lot of passion uh creative energy between you and this person i want to say um maybe a new project together there's inspiration a lot of inspiration between the two of you or someone feels this person might feel inspired by you but there is some boundaries up okay there's some hesitation I, this is the wounded warrior so if you know who this person is right it feels like it's a really good relationship and it is possible it could be romantic but it feels like the friendship or the partnership the without expectation there is a really good connection here but i do feel oh, yeah you know something you got the, oh my gosh, you got the nine of wands to the eight of wands. I feel like this person is going to be reaching out to you over this weekend. There's going to be like Cupid's arrows here. Some good news, a lot of communication, a lot of messages coming from this person. Okay. Where this person, this king of cups, I feel like sits here kind of like, should I or shouldn't I? Should I reach out? Kind of hesitant to do it, but it looks like they will. There's definitely like, I mean, listen. The Eight of Wands is, it can be romantic, like uh, Cupid's Arrows kind of thing. So there, there is some fleeting passion here between the, all, the, all these wands. So, yeah, let me see. There's travel as well. Oh my gosh, somebody's coming in here. To, they want to marry you. Virgo, this person, or at least commit. Commit to some kind of relationship. This person is, I'm also here in conformity. So hmm, it could be a friend. You guys might be friends. And then you find out over the weekend that this person actually has a, a, a little thing thing for you. Where with the Hierophant, hmm, they're going to ask you out on a, like in a traditional way or on a date. Or they want to connect with you in a very traditional, formal way. <laughs> ask you to a formal date formal date formal dinner yeah i do get because of the eight of wands i do feel like this has some kind of romantic element to it okay so if this is just a friend for you 
um, I feel like this person, you are not just a friend to them. Okay. A little bit more, Virgo, a little bit more than that. Okay. So let me see here, but it's a good connection. Soulmates are like, there might be this realization. There's a soulmate connection. Soulmates are like just a really like a great partnership. Okay. Just get along, have a lot in common. Anything else that Virgo needs to know about this? Oh, oh, that's your energy here. Queen of Swords, masculine or feminine. Um, hmm. What's going on with you? I feel like that, like, so I'm hearing, uh, there's definitely going to be some type of communication, but I don't know if you're going to reach out to them or they're going to reach out to you. Queen of Swords can be like, see, why is she being so honest? Let me see. She's very curious. That's, oh, oh. Oh, okay. Um, you, you like say something to this person over this weekend. Like I'm going to need to see your, um, I'm going to need to see your, 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 your references. <laughs> what the heck? <laughs> it's kind of like she's saying, so she's being very sharp and direct, the Queen of Swords, and she's saying that she's being very direct and assertive with her communication. There's something here to do with taking charge or being direct. I feel like if you already have a connection with this person, You may say something to them if you haven't already about being direct with their communication, not beating around the bush, not blurring the lines. I don't know if this is a pushback. It could be. Some of you, this could be a pushback because the Knight of Swords is like, has a lot to say and is changing. It's about a lifestyle change. There's some kind of connection here. Okay. And I feel like, yeah, I mean, <sighs> I don't know if it's like you saying, are you sure? Are you sure? You know, Virgo, how you can be very analytical and to the point, very direct and blunt. Um, either you're going to be that way with this person when they come in with these Cupid's arrows. Or, no, I feel like you're going to be that way when they reach out to you. You might be like try, being curious and asking them questions like, are you, are you, are we going to be together? Do you want to be together? Like, what do you want? What do you want? It's kind of like that. And there's the Ten of Cups. Yeah. Hmm. This is very interesting. What's on your mind? Do you, like, want to happily ever after with me or what? What are you doing? Like, it's not as, and it may be for some of you, it might be some pushback. For others, it's just like direct communication. And even this person could be showing up and, and actually being very direct, spending a lot of time thinking or say, you know, I've been thinking about something here, feeling lost and left out in the cold, tired of struggling, really wants a happily ever after situation. So, you know, Virgo, I don't know exactly who your person is. It doesn't have to be a water sign. It doesn't have to be an air sign. It can be. It could be a Virgo. It could be a Taurus. But whoever the person is, I feel like there is going to be some communication. And it might even be, you're my soulmate. It might even be that. Okay. And it might even be, been a lot of struggles, been together. Been through a lot of struggles together. Don't want to go it alone anymore. I need you. This is what I'm hearing. I need you. I need you. All right. So that's playing out. Okay. So you also have twin flames. Okay, what's going on with this twin? I can't believe these cards came out. Like this is huge. This, this is huge. Let's take a look. Hmm. So that okay, they just said this person. They consider you a soulmate. Okay, but you consider them a twin flame. So maybe if you put it together, it's a soul flame. Twin mates. I feel like Virgo, maybe you always knew that your twin flame and you at some point would work things out or be together. OK, 
okay? Some of you, not all of you, okay? This is not for everybody, but some of you. See, you see what I'm saying? I'm hearing, Virgo, your energy is do the right thing. Do the right thing. Have the courage to do the right thing. This is your energy. Like, this feels more like you, okay? Um, the truth, I'm hearing, they're saying the truth will set you free. So I don't know if you say this to this person. We do have Gemini, Libra, and Leo here. But there's an energy of this, the truth will set you free. There's the King of Swords, okay? It could, it, your energy again. Or it's an air sign that you're dealing with. But the King of Swords is very direct and honest. So there is some type of a match in your communication. What the heck? There's some type of a match in your communication. Like, I feel like you guys are going to communicate very directly with each other. There's going to be truth told, a win-win situation happening here in some kind of a relationship. But I, I don't feel like your person believes in the whole twin flame thing I, I believe you might understand or believe that more but i feel like your person might understand the soulmate connection yes definitely so you know you're i feel like you look at this person as if they're a little bit cold and you just wish they had the strength and the courage to just be direct and honest with you and i feel like you require that from this person just I'm here, yeah, because they've been very quiet, or they are just very quiet type person. So, you know, this is part um, of the growth, the growth between the two of you. You know, um, somebody left a comment. I can't remember who it was, but I gotta say, and I meant to reply to her, and it was about the twin flame. The way she worded it, I gotta say, was really, really great. And I'm gonna re uh, let me give her a shout out. Because it, the way she said it was like, she just put it together so well. Uh, let me see if I can find her. I know everybody's talking about their dreams. And thank you, you guys, for um, leaving comments about your dream stuff. I did read all of those. Oh, here it is. Lola wants, Lola gets. She said, in reference to what you said about the twin flames coming together, you mentioned why would God, well, I said spirit, bring them together when they weren't ready. But truly, that's the whole point of the twin flame journey. You meet each other specifically for the reason of mirroring and showing each other what needs to grow and each one, and on each one of you. It's a very long journey, usually never coming together within the lifetime. So honestly, I don't believe that flames ever come together without an absolute crap load of work to do prior to ever entering any sort of union. That's an essential part of being a twin. All of the garbage you have to work out with each other prior to union. And then somebody said, I think that a lot of the epic false, inf the e e egoic, False information about twins makes the path a lot longer. This is from AP23, I'm sorry, 3204. It seems to be true that I got hit by a freight train when I connect, connected with my twin, but my life experience made it such that while it's decimated my ego, I've been able to shoulder, shoulder all the burden. So you guys, you left a lot of great comments about that. And I, I, I have to say, I, I'm in agreement with that. And thank you for commenting. I'm in agreement with that. There's some kind of relationship here that's, you know, and we're coming close to being out of this Mercury retrograde, and that Mercury retrograde does cause a lot of self-reflection, redoing things, rethinking things, and I feel like this is what's happening here with someone in particular, your, you know, whoever you consider your twin flame or they consider a soulmate, maybe they never believed in that stuff before, there's some kind of recognition that's happening here, and I think the biggest obstacle in this relationship was direct communication. I really do. Direct or consistent communication. Yeah. So I feel like you view this person as um, a little bit cold, um, quiet, secretive, a bit avoidant. Yes. But hmm, something here tells me that there's a growth happening here. There's definitely some change and a growth. I just feel like... I, Virgo, I feel like this you and this person, your person here, 
you do have the lovers this is right and just this connection this is a right this is a right relationship now if you're not together currently and you don't hear from this person over the weekend it does not mean that you should sit around tapping your fingers and waiting patiently no you need to do the work too whatever work you have to do to heal yourself or to change certain things and to grow you definitely have to do that too and i feel like you are aware that this is how the relationship is i will say i do feel like this person they prefer like intellectual debate over like confrontation they, they really they, they go into their shell when it comes to confrontation and i feel like this person needs to learn how to address confrontation here um, because there are virgos out there that can they i I don't know many Virgos who aren't afraid to confront someone. Some people are. Some Virgos, you know, give or take a few. But I feel like with this person, they need to be able to get, like, to secure themselves, to be able to stand up for themselves or say no or just not take any shit or not. <laughs> you know, if someone's confronting them in a way to be like, you know what, I, I see what you're saying but to not own it you know what i mean i feel like it's, it's a real struggle for this person perhaps that's their journey or maybe it's you and that's your journey that you have to learn um to not people please if you do that right so yeah there's definitely a changed view and perspective that's going to be happening here with this twin flame and it feels like for both of you okay there's definitely some little bit of like let me just choose my battles not every i don't need to fight every single battle that comes down the tube i can let some things slide and i feel like that might be some kind of lesson that's being learned here over the weekend and also in between you and this person whoever your person is now with karmic relationship right fleeting triggers turmoil resentment lessons letting go and loving yourself so for some of you maybe you think your twin flame soulmate is actually a karmic but maybe it just feels that way because of these triggers you guys trigger each other and there's turmoil and like i said there's lessons here okay hmm some things maybe happen in this relationship. There's some issues with, with a father figure. Okay. And someone here is repeating patterns with other people. These are unresolved issues. They, they could not resolve in their childhood because they were too young and didn't know how. So they get into a relationship with similar types of people and they try to re they try to resolve those issues with a new person it's like will smith what once said in some song don't let new don't let someone pay for the i don't remember the lyrics don't let the don't let someone new pay for the past right so i feel like someone here rather than sitting down and addressing the trauma and and fighting that reframing that trauma from their childhood Someone here gets into relationships and just keeps recycling these same patterns. Do you know? So it's like, you know, like you take a person who had a parent who was very cruel. So this person will choose people who are very cruel. Um, and then they will try to resolve the issue with that person who's very cruel. But it, it's not to be done with somebody new it's to be done in some kind of therapy or to reframe things you know or to learn to um behaviorally change okay there there may have been also a father figure in someone's childhood who was a cheater and uh was a liar and or was stealing and was very dishonest or was running away ran away from you know the the family home or you know was just a runner or was in and out yeah and so that's something that you could have experienced or this person could have i feel like both of you major major two people trying to resolve their past issues with one another and those issues were not caused by one another they were caused by the past but the relationship triggers those past things okay so there's a high sensitivity to 
those triggers. Okay, so yeah, look at that. Be there was some kind of betrayal. And, and so this relationship feels like it's happening all over again. Some of you might have even said, this person is just like my ex or just like my parent, one of my parents. Or why do I keep, somebody might say, why do I keep finding the same people? Or why do people keep cheating on me? Why does this keep happening? So we, and I feel like for you, Virgo, because you haven't resolved those trauma issues from your past, right? You might be subconsciously choosing to stay with people who are familiar, but it just because it's a familiarity doesn't make it healthy. You know what I mean? So there's some stuff here. Look, here's a devil. There might have been some addictions, um, betrayals, backstabbing. Uh, there's something. And it might have happened in this relationship as well. Okay? And, of course, it doesn't mean you should be staying in that. But there is, until, some, until two people or at least one person is fully ready to surrender to these problems that keep resurfacing in their life and really, like, get in there and dig in there and figure out where it's coming from and you know why someone is acting the way they're acting and why someone is reacting the way they're reacting it's never going to heal so these karmic issues these triggers these fleeting things this if you and your person um are on the outs right now that's fine leave them alone and you go do you work on your you know your get your workbooks talk to someone watch some 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 videos or something like really get in there and identify and not just identify because identifying something is only half the battle it said learning how to reframe those things you identify and learning how to overcome them by putting things into practice it's much like a virus you know the, the physician or the researcher they'll identify a virus and while that's all well and good um we still need to figure out a way to combat this, combat this, I can't say this word, combat this virus so it doesn't keep spreading, okay? And the virus could be in the mind, could have something, it's toxic, it's like some kind of toxic stuff. So, I, so what I'm seeing, to roll back around here, I feel like this is a beautiful connection, whether one believes it's a twin flame, the other thinks it's a soulmate, there are some issues that can easily be dealt with if there's direct communication, vulnerability, openness. And it has but it has to go both ways. It can't just be one person and the other one's just completely closed off. Okay? It has to be two people who are being vulnerable, being open with each other, sharing with each other what's going on and, you know, working and you know, working on changing these these are cut, cutting these chains here breaking these chains is what i'm hearing okay and for some of you it, it's you right um and and i'm not saying it's not the other person either but they're focusing mostly on you okay and so once you heal once you get yourself in that really good place where you are like oh i can identify i know why i know why i'm feeling this way by my person doing this particular thing i know why i'm feeling this way now but I need to express myself better, right? And I need to tell this person, look, this makes me feel A, B, C, and D. This makes me think A, B, C, and D. This is what I need to correct this within myself, and I'm gonna need your help. And if you're available to help me with that, then great. And if the other person's like, can't help you with that, you're on your own, goodbye. Well, then you know that like that's your sign. Keep it moving. If, as soon as someone is just like, if they're pushing you away, they have their own issues they need to deal with and leave them be, okay? Especially if it if it's like like with the twin flame journey. Two people being, uh, one person maybe being ready and the other not quite ready. But it looks like there is some kind of shift and some kind of change. But I feel like I always want to say to you, Virgo, because we focus on Virgo here, not so much the other people. You know, make a decision to take that journey if you haven't already. Right, And I feel like I'm speaking mostly to those of you who really haven't contemplated or made a decision. Um, going after your ninth cup, what's going to make you the most happy? You know, how are you going to get your own needs met? Because you, if you're not fulfilled within yourself and you feel secure within yourself, nobody really is. It's really, 
it's helpful when other people are accommodating to want to help you feel better. People should always bring benefit and bonus to our lives. But to expect someone to fill your voids, expect, it's the word expect, to expect someone to fill your voids, like that's too much pressure for anyone. Too much pressure. That's too much to live up to right? You fill your own secure voids, right? You have to heal those. And, but the relationship should be fun and joyous. And there should be a lot of good times, more good times than not. And there should be an ability to communicate properly with each other and to be open and vulnerable. Okay. And kind, right? And I get it, Virgo. Listen, nobody likes a doormat and nobody's telling you to be a doormat right? And nobody's telling you to be a kiss ass. You have to have your boundaries in life. You can't go through a relationship, people pleasing or doing something for someone. Like I always did that. I have to tell you, I always did that because I was too afraid to stand up for myself. Yeah, for sure. And instead of standing up for, because I knew that if I stood up for myself, that this person wasn't going to be able to meet my needs. And I couldn't, I, I was too afraid to lose them. Right? So I would go out of my way and that was my anxious attachment I would go out of my way to do everything to try to keep him invested but it wound up where it never it didn't work out and it just doesn't when you when you do that but when you get to this place where it's like you know what I don't need to go out of my way if someone wants to be here I'm going to give them reasons why they would want to be here right but I'm going to give myself those reasons first because you have to see yourself as and believe that you're a wonderful person you're a good per everybody's got trauma everybody's got something from their past the older you get the worse it is because there's so much garbage right because you collect shit on the way but then when you get like way older at this point it's you know it's like uh, i can't be bothered let me just go live my life and be happy <laughs> you know you just don't want any drama so you know whoever i'm talking to i'm not exactly sure but the thing is if you're in a situation with someone here which I do feel they're going to make some changes here, but it's important that you do as well because if you don't, it, things are just going to keep recycling. Right? Am I right? Yeah, I think I am. But what do I know? So let, let me check out your Chinese signs. Let's see what the Chinese signs are here. All right, someone's a year of the dog, year of the tiger, year of the goat. Year of the Dragon. And I'm just going to do two more. Year of the Pig. And a Year of the Horse. Okay, so if I didn't call you Chinese sign, don't worry. It doesn't mean it's not your reading. And as you know, the weekend readings are a little bit shorter. All right, let's take a look. Messages of Love. What are the messages of love here? Oh, how sweet. Second Chance. This relationship deserves a second chance. Not a third, not a fourth, not a fifth, not a sixth, not a seventh. Second chance. Okay, there is some kind of an addiction that's affecting this relationship, right? Your addiction or you're co-addicted. Addiction could be codependency, something like that. You guys should check out the attachment styles, attachment theory. I implore you if you don't know about that. And if you're wanting to make changes within yourself, Definitely go read about the attachment theory. Um, I've mentioned this on my channel quite a few times. As a matter of fact, I will leave a link in the description box if you've never heard of it before. Um, most of the time, the majority of the feminines are anxiously attached, right? Or fearfully, or have a fearful avoidant attachment or an anxious preoccupied attachment. Generally, most of the females do. Most of the males have a dismissive avoidant attachment and some might have fearful avoidant as well um but that is just it's not written in stone but you can take little tests to see where you fall you might wind up showing up as a securely attached person so if you have a relationship that's difficult take the test to see or your past relationships you could you could do it because sometimes sometimes it shifts and changes a little bit so if you're with like if you're anxiously attached and you're with someone who's very securely attached um they're not going to trigger your anxiety your anxious stuff right it's usually you're going to find an anxious attached person involved with a dismissive avoidant and the more dismissive and avoidant 
one person is, the more triggers of anxiety and chasing the other gets with their anxious attachment, right? But when the anxious attachment gets secure, the dismissive avoidant becomes less avoidant. It's really, it's like a dance. It is, it's like a dance. And it's like Saturday Night Fever out here. You know, everybody's out here trying to figure out what the heck's going on. Check it out, go read about it, and figure out where you are on the spectrum, because it is a spectrum, and see if it will help you if you follow, you know, and if you have any of the insecure attachments, see how you can heal that. Because it all stems, apparently it all stems from ch your childhood, like your early, early childhood and your, your parents. And your parents had certain attachments and it's not their fault. They got them from their parents. This is just a cycle that like, it's like keeps passing down like DNA, but it can be, it can be healed. Anyway, went on a long diatribe there. Okay, vulnerability. You, you, you not only can be completely open with this person, but you must. Because the worst thing you can do for yourself is stifle yourself. Now, if you are like very avoidant, it's still important for you to be vulnerable and open and learn not to fear anyone leaving you if you open up and share who you are. Okay? Because a lot of times avoidance do that they keep a distance a lot of people who seek out long distance relationships only are primarily avoidance they have an avoidant attachment and yet they want love but as soon as another person requires so much from them then they get avoidant again they lean over to the other side you know but they generally heavy heavy not all but heavy avoidance generally seek out these long distance things because they don't have to be vulnerable right so Uh, let me just tell you this the runner chaser is based on the avoidant anxious attachment relationships that's the runner chaser so are you the runner are you are you the chaser and are you dealing with the opposite yeah you got past life love here yeah so this definitely has something to do for some of you this might be some kind of old relationship where like it's really old and your person's they might be married again or with somebody else who knows and they come to realize this was a soulmate and you feel like not this was my twin flame whatever it still means that whatever things haven't been resolved in the karmic area of this relationship these triggers it's really important for you to heal because if you want to get into a healthy relationship again um try to find someone who's secure securely attached but also try to become more secure. If you want uh, someone who's safe, you gotta be safe, right? It's the same theory. Woo, we're getting Psych 101 in here. I love the attachment theory. I think it's like amazing, but you know, it. listen, it has to be practice. It's really, it's hard to do because you really gotta get in there and do the work so that you can kind of understand. Like I know I have always had an anxious attachment, always. And it made it hard on my partners. But it's funny because my partners were always dismissed. There were always avoidance, always, except for one. One was, he was anxious. And so then I would lean more to the avoidance side when his anxiety got the better of him. And he would be calling me 20 times a day, telling me how much he misses me. And I'd be like, I just saw you an hour ago. So then I would start avoiding him more. <laughs> and the secure thing to do would to just, you know, say to him, hey, I like have a conversation with him with reassurance, you know, and try to help ease him. Yeah. Anyway, I don't know. I'm getting into all this, but this feels like a lot of work this weekend, you guys. And if you get an opportunity, I just know that if you, if this opens your eyes, I know some of you have already been onto this and you know what I'm talking about, but if you don't, this is going to open up the floodgates and change so much for you. Oh my God, this is where the hope comes in. Because I know some of you are like, I don't, I, I can't do the dating. I don't want to meet anybody. It's too hard. It's too much to, blah, 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 blah. Go check out that information. I'll leave a link in the description box for you to check out over this weekend. It's your birthday gift to you from me. Especially if you have a birthday over this weekend. All right. There's an old saying. When we get better, people around us get better. And it's true. 
All right, what's your message here? You have Ten of Pentacles. Financial security for yourself and your family. Inheritance or retirement. Peace and contentment in life. Honoring family traditions. Pride in the family tree. Passing on knowledge. We're dropping some knowledge here today. I might even, maybe I should become an attachment theory coach. I think I might. I really love all that stuff. Anyway, you also have the world. A brilliant success, a time of joyful accomplishment and spiritual enlightenment, freedom to do whatever you want. Be proud of yourself, right? New chapter, Virgo, with the world. New beginnings here. Completing a goal or learning a lesson. This is all about completion. A whole new world opens up the horizon. I love this. I feel like I just don't want to go on anymore, but I will. I will. Um, I'm, we're just going to do charms. We're going to leave all the nicknames and numbers and all that out. Okay, and just get some charms for you guys. All right. It's bananas. Somebody like bananas? Okay. Slippery slope. You're heading into a slippery slope. Once you get on that slide and start sliding, yep, it's going to, this change, I feel like the message here is the changes are going to go really quick for you because you're going to have like light bulb moments. And re, like everything I feel like is going to come together for you in regards to karmic relationships, your soulmate, and your twin flame. And I, I hope that. I was able to express this to you in a way that's understandable. <laughs> but we'll, hopefully, leave me a comment below and let me know if you know anything about the attachment theory. It'd be great if you can post some stuff. Maybe if you have any knowledge on this, it might help other people in the comments section. All right, we also have like a dachshund, a wiener dog. So somebody might have a dachshund, dachshund, dachshund. A dachshund. Oh, look, here's an elephant again. A lot of elephants this week, you guys. There is a, there's a connection to an elephant. Oh, they just said the elephant in the room. Addressing the elephant in the room. Yep, this is the, this is the, this is the Mercury retrograde. Rethinking things. And needing to address this elephant in the room. And you know what? Some of you, it's your own elephant. Everybody has their own elephant. Somebody, some people are not addressing themselves. They're looking outwardly instead of looking inward. Self-reflection. Very, very important. Address your elephant, Virgo. Address your elephant. Or that elephant that was in your family's room when you were a kid. Address that elephant. He's still there. You took, put, him on, put a leash on him and brought him with you. You've been walking this damn elephant around your whole life. It's time to like look at the elephant and say, you know what? I release you. You're free to go. Bye-bye. Let go of that elephant. You also have a pink star. Pink star. Hmm. And a taffy. Aw. Going back to your baby days. What was your child like? childhood like? Can you remember if your parents are alive? ask them maybe ask your parents what their attachment styles were i guarantee it's mostly the mostly the moms or the women were anxiously attached and mostly the dads were avoidance it's just most majority we also have some ballet slippers some of you might have practiced ballet when you were a child or did some kind of sport that your parents were like forced you to do they were forced you have some trauma, some stuff from your childhood. And I feel like your person does too. These strict rules. Right? There's a fear of getting close. Definitely. Oh my gosh. Look at this. You have two moons here. And they're exactly the same. Oh, oh my gosh. Two halves of a whole. Two halves of a whole. That's symbolic, you guys. That is very symbolic. This relationship is the sum of both of your parts. Even if you're not together, even if you'll never be together again. This relationship was, I feel like, 
there is a possibility, guys, like I said, another chance comes around, but that's, you don't have to worry about that. You just have to focus on healing and get rid of that elephant, right? But, but this, this connection with whomever this, this could have been your first marriage, could have been your second, it could have been your high school boyfriend or girlfriend, could have been your most recent relationship. You might still be in it. Very important relationship because it's, meant to mirror and show you the things that you need to work on okay and i feel like i don't want to blow smoke but i i feel like you're not the only one going through this virgo i do i feel like you're not the only one dealing with your you know sweeping up your side of the street i feel like there's somebody else here who's sweeping up their side of the street yeah so i'm going to leave that reading there i hope that gave you some insight for the weekend but you know listen Maybe it's just something to chew on. If you have a birthday party going on this weekend, look, you, you do this work when you're ready to do the work. Look into it, and when you're ready to get down and figure stuff out, you do that on your own time when you want to do that. If you just you have your birthday this weekend, or you got some plans, or you're doing something this weekend, go have fun. Go enjoy your weekend. Do whatever you need to do, right? But do commit to yourself, self-care. All right, Virgo. So, all right, you guys, happy birthday again. Ready to start Virgo season. Super excited. Don't forget to join my channel. I'll be uploading the members only videos. Um, I'm going to try to do it on Monday, I think. So if you've already joined the VIP membership, you're going to get those videos. Okay. All right, you guys. And thanks everyone for buying the extended readings. I greatly appreciate that. And to all of you who have recently joined, let me give you a quick shout out. So let's see, we have, oh, somebody said they, okay, no, it's still the same. Yeah, it's still the same. Okay, somebody told me that they recently joined, but I don't see, hmm, maybe they haven't updated it yet. All right, so we'll check back on Sunday. All right, everybody, have a great weekend. Love you, bye. I just can't let you go. Lord knows that I've tried to. You said I was the only 